Thank you for watching the TDC Heart Rods YouTube channel. Welcome back. So in this video, we are doing a nine month and roughly 10,000 mile review on the 65 F100 Crown Vic Swap. So I guess I will, I'm maybe not necessarily a review, but just an update. Uh, things that I've done to it, uh, things that I like about it and don't like about it. Um, but yeah, so the truck itself, looks identical and that's because i haven't done a single thing to it the video of me driving it down to go on a dirt bike ride was literally the last time i've done anything to this truck except for just flat out drive it every single day and change the oil and put gas in it i've not done anything else um, but with that being said I've definitely found things that I like about it and things that I don't like about it. And then there's a few things that I just deal with, but the majority of it, I freaking love the truck. The truck is amazing to ride in. It's so much fun because it, it sits low. It's got a wide track width like the Crown Vic. It handles like an animal. I, I just like, I don't, I honestly believe that the truck handles better than the Crown Vic did. And the suspension on it is 100% stock. I haven't done anything to it. Um, the tires and wheels even come with the Crown Vic. But um, anyways, I'm gonna start with the few things that I don't like and the issues that I've had. So when I put the truck together, I had to widen and we'll see if you can see it. Can you see the bow in the bed right here? I had to widen out the wheel well on both bed sides to be able to fit these aftermarket wheels. I definitely thought it was worth it because I liked the look of it. Um, but that being said, there's still not very much space in here and I have to pull the shock off in order to drop the axle low enough to get the tire and wheel out. Um, so for me, I don't, that part doesn't really bother me that much because it's just one extra bolt. Um, and then you just have jack up on the frame rather than the axle to get the tire out. But for somebody that might bother them, if it had stock tires and wheels or factory Crown Vic offset, that wouldn't be a problem at all. They would come right off. Um, but where these ones are a little wider, plus the offset pokes them out a little bit, there's an issue. Um, but that doesn't really bother me too much. But now if we go up to the front, this side, has been hit, um, obviously you see here, and it was damn dented in pretty hard right there when it was hit. Well, I pushed that out quite a bit, but definitely didn't push it out enough. And at full lock, so if I turn the wheel to the left this way, at full lock, it'll barely rub here. And then if I turn the wheel all the way to the right, it does the same barely rub on the passenger side. The passenger side isn't damaged at all. It just sits low enough. Actually, now that I look at it, there is, it is kind of damaged a little bit, but um, nothing too bad. So I haven't fixed that 
for a few reasons. I've just been driving it. Um, I just drove it every single day, all summer long. Took it all over the place. I used it as a truck, a light truck, definitely a light truck, but it definitely had plenty of lumber and wood and shop supplies and parts and all kinds of stuff in the bed, just using it as a daily driver truck, a shop truck. Um, but, so my plan with the fender is, I'm going to pull the tires and wheels off and put a piece of wood in there with my porta power and push off the frame just to give the fender just a slight, and I mean, I bet if I went out three quarters of an inch, that the tires wouldn't rub at all. Um, and like I say, they only rub at full lock and definitely if you hit a bump, but I think I can fix that pretty easy. Um, and so that, that stuff doesn't really even bother me that much, but just something to think about if you guys are doing one um, that aftermarket wheels will, will rub. Well, here's my biggest complaint. We're gonna get that out of the way and then I'm gonna talk about everything that I love about the truck. So, um, 65 Ford has the door seals here, glued in here, and I could get these. So I bought these from Dennis Carpenter. I'm very particular on where I'm gonna buy the anti-rattle kit and the doors, the wing window seal because they're all missing there and oh, you can't hear it there but if I go like this that window just flops around well when you're sitting in the truck driving 85 80 the speed limit around here on the freeway is 80 so if I'm doing 80 to 83 the inside wind noise is very loud um, that's definitely my, <clears throat> my biggest gripe of the whole truck um, I just throw my headphones in when I'm driving and it's not a big deal. But Dennis Carpenter is still on back order for those anti-rattle kit, um, which sucks, definitely sucks. I really wish they would get that in stock so I can get that sealed up and that would solve the majority of all my inside cab wind noise. The next thing I'm going to do to help solve even more of that is I never finished the wind, the wheel liner right here. So when you're driving down the road, the wind comes from here and I put my hand right past this area. And then the wind will come up and hit here and whistle like a son of a bee through um, the hinges and anywhere that it possibly can. So, my plan, which is going to happen very soon, is to build a new fender liner that will attach to the factory Crown Vic liner that fits nice and tight in here and then goes down across the bottom just to keep the air out of that, that area. I really think that would help a ton. Also, on the newer cars, and even like this newer Chevy, if you pull the fender off, it's going to have a piece of foam in there is a sound detonator. I'm going to do the same thing on this. Um, I think that would fix 99% of all the wind noise inside this cab because I've definitely done plenty of other restorations and stuff where we're putting brand new seals and everything and the inside cab noise even at 80 miles an hour is very minimal. The wind noise. These will never be as quiet as a brand new car just because the shape of them and it's old metal and the fitment of everything. But that's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to make it comfy. Um, so that's definitely the worst thing that I don't like about it is the wind noise. But that is my fault because I don't, I choose not to spend money on cheaper ones. I want good high quality sills and Dennis Carpenter, in my opinion, is one of the best for Fords. Um, so that's where I wanna buy them from. Um, now off to the things I absolutely love about it. And the number one thing is Crown Vic floor, old classic seat. You can't, you can't really tell by, without actually sitting in it, but this is the most comfortable 65 Ford I have ever driven, ever. It is just, it's got that old school bouncy seat. And then the crown, the shape of the Crown Vic floor 
um, gives it a little bit extra leg room. So it just, it's super comfy. I'm six foot four and I fit in this thing no problem. Very, very comfortable for a single cab pickup. Um, yeah, I love that. that. That's definitely my favorite is driving it. It's super fun. The cruise control is awesome. The power brake, I mean, the disc brakes all the way around is awesome. I really love the track width of it. It just handles like it's on rails. Um, there's a canyon not too far away from where I'm at that the speed limit drops down to 65 or 70. But if I've chosen a couple of times to run through there at 80 plus, and it is just on rails. It handles so, so darn good. Um, what else was I gonna say? Yeah, basically the truck is just doing awesome. It is fantastic. I drive it every day. It's super reliable, um, which it should be because it's 100% Crown Vic drivetrain. Um, but yeah, it's just a super, super awesome truck to drive. The looks that I get is fun, which everybody around here now knows the truck, so it's not anything special anymore, which is fine. That's fine. Uh, but I just have a blast driving it. But now I'm gonna tell you all the stuff that I need to do. Um, and the biggest thing is covering up that hole right there. Actually, we're gonna come back to inside, but let's talk about this. So I need to cap this off. I know exactly how I wanna do it. Um, I just need to get to it and I need to get to it soon because snow is gonna start flying and salt and I just don't want junk getting all over in there. I wanna be able to still put stuff back here and not get it completely covered. But I got this and I stole this idea from somewhere online. I don't even remember where I seen it at, but I'm gonna cut up that jerry can and mold it into the bed and have the fuel spout come through the jerry can and this will be where I actually fill it up at. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that yet, but I got some really good ideas. I'm just going to start cutting and see what happens. Um, but I think that would be real sweet. Uh, and then just get the inside of the bed capped off. And I don't know if I'm going to bed line in here. Probably not. I'll probably just keep it rustic looking like the rest of it. Um, just because I do use the truck every day for shop use or running errands or whatever. Um, but the next biggest thing is, besides getting the wind noises fixed, which that just is gonna have to happen whenever Dennis Carpenter gets stuff in stock, is the dash. The dash is, it's gotta get done. I have a gentleman um, that wants me to build him one of these and I've got to get the dash on mine figured out before I go to do it on his, just so then I can see if he likes the way I did it or wants me to modify it for his truck or whatever that is. But here's my thought. So when I sit in the truck, I got plenty of leg room here. No problem at all. So I'm gonna follow the dash along from the bottom molding there because I want to put the white paneling back in there so I'm gonna go from the bottom molding bring the dash along here and then about here so right about here I'm gonna turn it down to fit the shape the squared off shape on the floor pan and same with this side it'll come along here and then turn down I'll build put a stereo here I'm looking to see if vintage air will has a vent that I can put up here for the AC and heater. And then on this side, have it do the same thing. Just come along here and match up with this right here. I think that, I think that would be sweet. We would just come along, barely go underneath, just basically flush underneath the steering column here and then turn down, have a nice stereo, a vent, put my cell phone charger, um, in there, I will have to set it back pretty far on this spot just so then the glove box door will still open and close. I want that to be workable, but I don't think that will be too big of a deal. So most likely the next biggest project that I'm going to do on the truck is going to be to tackle this dash. Uh, I really, really want the dash done. It'd be super nice to have some actual vents for everything. Um, it would also be super nice that when Gilbert gets here 
to drop his truck off for me to build that he'll be able to look at this and uh, have an idea of what we're gonna do to his. Um, but yeah, so what else is there? I think that's about it. The, the update on the truck is basically that it's been phenomenal. It's been so awesome. Um, super fun to drive, super reliable. Um, I need to fix the wind leaks and the um, fender rubbing issue. Oh, oh, that's the neck The I totally forgot about this one. So because I cut the floor, this section is Crown Vic and this is section I built. The cab mount on the old pickup would have been right here. The cab mount on the Crown Vic is about right there. Well, in within the first thousand miles, the rear cab mounts for the Crown Vic had collapsed. And because of that, it dropped the back of the cab down. So the, the body lines there didn't line up anymore. It dropped it down, which then caused the drive line to rub. And I thought it was something with how I had built the floor pan. But after looking at it, it was just, I noticed that the cab mounts had collapsed. So um, I went in there and spaced it up and built a brace around there. So then that wouldn't happen. I am going to put brand new cab mounts on it. Um, and all of them in the future, I will brace that, but I will show you guys in a later video how, how I do that. I'll make a video with that in it. Um, so yeah, wind noise, fender rubbing, which is absolutely minimal, honestly. It's only at full lock and it's only under the right circumstances, but I'm gonna fix that. Um, and then the cab mount collapsing, which I think if you had a car that wasn't have as many miles on it as this one, that probably wouldn't be an issue. Um, but yeah, so future updates will be the dash and finishing out the bed. Um, and then just driving it, just putting a bunch more miles on it. Um, the truck is so darn fun to drive. I don't know how to emphasize that enough because it's just a lot of fun. It's super, super fun. It gets great gas mileage. It's so comfortable. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this little update video, which just a Rambletron video is all it really is. Um, it's super fun, um, but we will have new videos of it coming out very shortly so i can get this baby finished up before the next one has to come in and uh thank you guys very much for watching and we will see you on the next one